Hello, this is Not a Spring Chicken. We're going to bring Old Cam on for breaking news from, from the feds on the housing crisis. After that, I'm going to talk to you about well, how you can avoid foreclosure and Thank keep you, your folks. home. This is hot, you know, but this here is 12.05 our time and at 12 o'clock it just hit the press is that the Fed is, is going to implement rules that they, they were thinking about since December, which is basically meant to change the whole way lending is done for housing. If you have a house right now, it means that you're going to be able, you know, to get better, better uh, terms for refinancing that house to keep you into that house, you know, uh, basically it's going to keep you in the house about six months longer. Because if, if you can't afford the house now, refinancing it isn't going to help you much more other than delay the inevitable. But in the process of what they're doing to be homeowner friendly, they're going to make it virtually impossible for the American dream to be held by the by the people that don't currently have houses because they're going to make lending practices harder. You're going to have to have more money up front. You're going to have to make, the, you're going to have to absolutely show guaranteed proof of income, which means if you're self-employed, forget it. Uh, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to guarantee that you can pay the taxes on the house and all the insurance, which means for all practical purposes, you're going to have to have that money stuck in a bank in advance, which means how many people can afford to put the taxes and the insurance money in a bank to be drawn out of in advance. So does that, that means the housing prices will go down further, won't it? Housing is going to collapse the market even more because um, uh, the American dream comes to an end. When I was young, the American dream basically was for those people that had a, you know, they had a GI Bill, which my family had, and uh, my also family did housing. <laughs> we always had houses, but, uh, and it, the banks lent money to people that could prove they didn't need a loan to begin with. That was the only way you could get into a house. You either had to prove you didn't need to borrow the money or you had to have the GI Bill. You know, today how many people can prove they don't need the money that don't already own homes? Oh, I think part of it has to do with the pricing of houses. Because I remember before if you wanted to get financed, if you made 100000 you could get a house that was 300000 or something like that. Yeah, okay, it works like this. Um, Figure, logistically, if the house costs you $150,000, figure that the house is going to, the payments are going to be somewhere between 7.5 and 10% of the sales price of the house per month. Mm -hmm. But that depends upon how long you stretch it out, you know, like the 10, 20, 30 year loans. You know, it goes lower the longer you stretch the loan out. Housing prices, down payments are also going to be increased on homes. Ooh, that's right. So forget that. Th what, what people have done three percent down. Yeah. Forget interest only loans. Probably would be interest my guess. Interest only loans, and they are not going to let you use the equity in your house to buy another house. Oh, now that's a key one because that's why most people get how they trade up. They trade up. You're not going to be able to trade up. You know, say that you wanted that vacation property at the lake. You could afford the vacation property at the lake if you borrow against the equity in your house. So equity loans are, are, will be finished, you know, if this is totally approved, and it will be approved. But the, the upside is, if you find a lender that does not get its money from the Fed, the lender that doesn't get its money from the Fed can basically make any loan terms they want to make. But the major company, you know, the banks, the huge lending agencies all get money from the Fed. So it, it's going to really damage the housing market. So Ooh. basically you've got... Uh, to be honest, you got between now and a week from now to go get that house before they, they're going to make all of these rules. Ooh, so that's, that, it's that soon? They said, but then, that within, they said, hopefully by this time next week, they'll have these rules in place. Wow, so that'll actually take effect immediately then, huh? It will destroy the future sales market on homes entirely. So people are thinking. So if you're in a house, you should probably just stay in your house and try and get it refined. Well, yeah. no, you don't even have to get it refinanced. No, no. If you're thinking of buying a house, though, it's you're going to have to have a lot more money up front. You're going to have to have more money in the bank during the course of the loan, and uh, it's going to be harder to get that loan because you have to have a, a verifiable proof of income. And a lot of people's salaries are not verifiable because it fluctuates. Salespeople cannot give a verifiable. Thing. A self-employed person, you know, like, uh, okay, like not a spring chick family owned, uh, the, basically they owned a grocery store.
but it, it the amount of money coming in ver changed from week to week, month to month. Mm -hmm. You have to have a steady, verifiable source of income to borrow in the new plans. Wow. So basically, the bank is looking for you to put up a hefty enough down payment to protect them in case the market goes down, and they also want to make sure you probably have money in the bank for at least a couple of years to pay taxes and yes, the mortgage Donald payments. Donald Greenspan, you have to have six months of income stick away in order to be able to afford the things. That isn't going to happen. Wow. Right. So, well, tough market. Yeah, now we'll get to the Otter Spring Chicks her part, which is less depressing than mine. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Well, you know, it can be less depressing because part of it is, <laughs> it's like how to avoid foreclosure. So part of it is if you're stuck in this and, you know, some places are more affected by others. Fortunately, where I live, there's some older homes, so there's not as many places that you see. But where my siblings live, there's quite a few houses. If they're newer areas um, or areas outside of major metropolitan areas, well, they've seen a radical change and they've seen a lot of foreclosures. But here's a hotline that we've seen. It's Governor Schwarzenegger's ta Task Force on Non-Traditional Mortgages, and it's yourhome.california.gov. It's a phone number, 888-995-HOPE. And if you're out of the state, you just contact your state representative and he'll probably tell you where they have something similar in your own state. Yeah, they probably do. But you can also look at this one too because it may give you some ideas because a lot of these things do not apply only to people in California. Um, some of the resources that are, of course, California only would apply, but some of those other ones I mean, you can take advantage of it too. So there's a lot of things that you can do to avoid foreclosure and keep your home. There's some caveats on here. Um, people facing money problems. You know, people face money problems for all sorts of reasons, for job loss, um, cuts in work hours or overtime, retirement, illnesses, divorce, separation. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why um, you may be facing money problems. So, unfortunately... Okay, I got you the life. very first one right. that my family has been in the construction business for decades. Right. Banks do not want to foreclose. Talk to your bank first. Well, that's one of the things that on. That's the first one. It says contact your lender as soon as possible. That's right. They do not want your house. Because, well, if they own your house, you don't make money. They can't sell it. It's they can't sell it. They don't want it. So, but, but lenders want to help borrowers keep their homes because foreclosure is expensive for them. HUD and private mortgage insurance companies investors like Freddie Mac. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae require lenders to work aggressively to help borrowers facing money problems. So a lot of times they do have workout options to help you and they opt, um, often work best when your payments are only one or two payments behind. Yeah, but they will work with you right Even up until the further. very end because they do not, I mean the banker will be the first person to tell you I do not want your home. So. You know, it's contact them early because then you have more options. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. Um, also, don't assume that your problems will quick, quickly correct themselves. Don't be overly optimistic. <laughs> I love to be optimistic. Oh, you mean like the National Board of Realtors who have finally yeah. admitted that housing sales are down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the other trick. Because your lender can actually help you with a lot of things and sometimes, well, there's other options too. Um, first of all, that assumes that you know who your lender is. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> just because, okay, just because you borrowed money from Bank of America to buy your house does not mean Bank of America has that loan because uh, you see these things on late night on television where they talk about, uh, you know, what we're doing is buying, you know, uh, buying loans. Yeah. That's how it works. The bank, you know, Bank of America, Countrywide, all these people, Wells Fargo, they'll put a loan out on something that they have They've taken on a place out on the market, and another company and picks it up. somebody else has bought it. Because we, we ran into that once. Ooh, I mean, we, so we, we had a loan through Wells Fargo on a project that my father was working on, and all of a sudden he finds out that a company in the Midwest was the owner of his house. <laughs> my father was very unhappy because he did not make the loan with that company, and the company that made the loan didn't honor the, the Wells Fargo loan. Right, because they made the agreement with Wells Fargo, right? That's right. And so then somebody else bought it out. And then they come Ouch. and said, well, you have to do this. <laughs>